Hi, Jeff Williams here, and uh, today I'm going to do a how-to on this uh, landing gear. Today I'm going to be installing it on the Legacy Aviation Muscle Bipe. However, the tips and tricks and techniques I'll be using will be applicable to many of the Extreme Flight family and brand airplanes. So let's get it started uh, on this Muscle Bipe. Uh, the way this one's going to go, we're going to mount the gear uh, with these 3 millimeter by 16 bolts and they have a washer on them and we'll put uh, a little bit of blue thread lock on them put them down in there and tighten them up uh, then will be these wheel cuffs and I'll show you how I do those then will be these axles and the tires and then the wheel pants now we have to go in that order because of these wheel cuffs uh, because they got to be able to slide over the gear here and get on before you put this on. Now, for airplanes that don't have wheel cuffs, you can go ahead and mount it and then put the tires and axles on and the wheel pants, but some people uh, will go ahead and put the axles and the tires and the wheel pants before they mount it to the airplane because sometimes it's just a little easier to turn and work and things like that, and either way is acceptable. Um, so your preference on that. But uh, when you have these cuffs, it has to go mounting, cuffs, wheel axles, then pants. So let's talk about this gear for just a second. This is a carbon fiber gear, and there is an orientation on this. There's a forward and a rearward orientation on this gear. Now on this particular airplane, we want a forward swept gear uh, on maybe the Pantera or the uh, some other airplanes, there might be a rearward swept. So on this one, it's pretty close, but I'll show you a little trick here and that's to put it on a flat surface and you can eyeball it on this one that has enough of a sweep to it you can see which way it sweeps forward okay but some of them are very minor okay so just take yourself a um, straight uh, or a square like this and hold it there and generally what I do is I put it up against something flat like this um, one way to do it would be actually if I just put it up against this and then, then I have a way to tell. I'll put it right there. Okay, so that is, all right, excuse me, let me go this way so you can see it better in the camera. And I'll put it up against there and just like that. Okay, so now I know. And then if I turn the gear around, you can see how far away it is there from the, uh, from the gear. Uh, right there, there's a big distance. So obviously this way is the forward swept. So uh, what some people do is they'll put a little piece of tape on here like painter's tape or something with a little arrow going forward. Now this one again, it's obvious which way it, it, it sweeps forward. So, but on some of them the sweep is very slight and in order to keep, once you do that, you don't want to do that again. So just put a little piece of tape on here with an arrow pointing forward and then uh, when you're done, you can remove the tape very easily and, and it works great. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, four bolts in. And um, I just put a little bit of lock, uh, thread lock on it. This is a blue thread lock. And get them lined up. And I don't put them all the way down. I leave them loose. Then I'll put the next one in, and again, I'll leave it, leave it up about an eighth of an inch. That way, if you gotta wiggle the gear, if uh, the alignment is just slightly off, uh, you can work with it. That's just a little tip that I use to, uh, to do it. So I'll go ahead and put these uh, all four in. We'll come back and uh, go to the next step. All right, now what I've done is I have this very long two and a half millimeter um, Allen uh, wrench that, or that I use, ball driver that I use, and uh, I just get them finger tight like this. Now I'm gonna take this other one that's like this because I can get a little more uh, torque on it, but again, you're going into blind nuts here. So usually what I do is just give them about three quarters of a revolution after they're finger tight. Probably not much more than one full turn. And that'll probably be tight enough. 
if you feel like you need a little more you can always put a little bit more torque on it but again you want to be careful this is uh, T nuts that uh, or blind nuts that you're going down into uh, there is some limitations on how far you might want to go with something like that because uh, they can strip it at, at some point and it is uh, wood so we don't want to smash wood either but good and tight taunt uh, like I say finger tight and then generally half to a full turn uh, this case it worked out about three quarters worked out real well okay uh, now that the gears all nicely mounted um, I've tried been trial fitting these cuffs on okay and um, it appears <coughs> excuse me it appears that there's a little more area right here uh, on this cuff as I look at it from the top okay and I'm going to bring it in here where you can take a look at it too all right so it appears there's just a slight bit more area on this side over here and they also tend to have a little bit of a sweep on this side of them versus this side so I will take the sweep here and I'm going to orient it forward and I want the more um, the side with a little bit more area in on it to go outward so mine are going to fit like this <clears throat> and they seem to fit down on there real nice and snug to the fuselage okay now before I get into adhering these things a couple things I want to talk about here um, these add no structural value they are for looks only okay so on these things sometimes i've put them on i've gotten them about right there and they catch and you may have to go in and open these up with either uh, this opening with an exacto or a dremel tool but on these they fit in there real nice so what i'm going to do is i'm going to center them right there where they're not even touching the gear but you got to think about the gear flexing a little bit when you put these on so um, what I do is I try to center them the best I can um, to the ability that you can of them and then I use a I use a foam tack welders adhesive um, there's probably some other types that uh, folks have used that are that works uh, really well um, I'm not much on the epoxies or anything that dries real, real brittle. This stuff does get hard, but it doesn't get brittle. Uh, again, this is uh, just beacon foam tech that people use for foamies. And so how do I do this now? All right, let's move on to that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue painter's tape and I'm going to make a little reference here. And this is... I'm just putting this tape at the top of the opening, okay? So when I figure out, I know that from there down is where I want glue, okay? So I don't want glue to go above that blue tape because if I do, it's going to ooze out everywhere beyond this wheel cuff, well, uh, beyond this wheel cuff, okay? Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on the inside here, a nice bead on the inside and that's going to go right down on here and then i'm going to put some glue on this around here then i'm going to flip the whole thing up on top of its gear and i'm going to tape it all off because all that glue is going to try to ooze out this bottom part via gravity so i want to capture it and that'll give me a nice uh fillet so to speak in there of the excess in here and as this glue flexes this stuff will flex a little bit, so that's how I'm going to do it. All right, so. All right, again, this is my left one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple beads of glue on here, and while I do that, uh, we'll take a break. Come right back with that part. All right, I'm back with glue uh, adhered here, and I'm getting a little bit of ooze out, uh, which is fine, because I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to very carefully 
wipe it off. Okay, don't be afraid to use a lot of paper towels on this because you want to keep this nice and clean installation. Okay, I'm going to take this tape off. Don't need that anymore. Okay, and then I'm going to shoot just a little bit of glue down in here yet. Let's see if I can't sew that up just a tad more. Looking good. All right, I'm very happy with that. So now I just need to clean it up. And okay, very happy with that. That looks clean. Now I'm going to take some tape, and this is going to help hold it in place and nice and tight. So I take some some big pieces here. I don't. Try to save any and see if I can keep it all in one area. do the top because I don't want it to ooze out here and it's going to try when I flip it upside down so take it and press it right on top of that gap there and that will keep that ooze and it will keep your pant right where you want it now I'm getting some some ooze out over here that a little bit more than what I want so let's wipe that off and let's put this on there. Let's see. There we go. Nice. That's yeah, good. All right, so I'll do the same thing to this one. And that'll be how we put our wheel cuffs on, keep them in place, and uh, right where we want them. And then I'm going to let that uh, this particular glue dry overnight. It's a slow cure. And, um, and then tomorrow, uh, I'll pick right back up with it. All right, we're back and um, my wheel cuffs are all dry now. Uh, everything's uh, real happy with the way it turned out. If you do have a little bit of glue oozing out here uh, from where you taped it off to kind of contain everything and uh, stuff, uh, what I do is I just take a, an X-Acto and I don't use the sharp edge. You don't want to use the sharp edge and cut through that resins on these uh, gear, create a weak point there. Uh, but what you want to do is to maybe take the uh, point in the back edge and you can come up to any of that's uh, coming on there. And at this point, an overnight dry, this, this glue is still very pliable. And uh, I can just flake it up a little bit to where I can just get a hold of it uh, with my finger. Or sometimes uh, just your fingernails enough to, to get it out of there. And uh, then you can just clean it up. I, I had just a couple little areas here, very, very small amount. But that's a little trick I use to, to go ahead and clean it up and give it that nice finished look. Um, moving on. We're going to put the, uh, the tires, the axles, the wheel pants, all that on. So it's kind of going to look like this when we go there, but how do we get there? Well, these are our axles right here. And I'm going to go ahead and let me set this airplane to the side here for a second. And uh, let's bring the camera in here because I got some things I really want to show you that we use as tricks to help ourselves uh, bring this all together. And uh, one of the things I want to show you here is this axle. Now, I hear from all the time people are talking about um, these axles. And I'm going to show you what I do. The wheel collars on them. All right, come in camera. Focus there for me. Uh, all right. Uh, boy, I'm not getting a good focus on there. 
Sorry about that, everybody. I'm a one-man show. There we go. All right. Now I'll twirl this around. And right there. Can you see? Um, right on uh, this side there. See that little flat spot that I ground into it? Okay. See how minor that flat spot is? Okay. Now, why did I do that? Okay. The reason I did that is when you put this wheel collar on here, um, I'm going to put that wheel collar so this little set screw goes right down on top of that flat spot right there. And then instead of it being on a round spot where it can wobble, it goes on that flat spot and it gives it something a little bit better to grip to with this with these little bitty set screws, okay? And don't for, forget to use blue lock tie, uh, blue uh, thread lock on these uh, little set screws. It don't, doesn't take just a very minor amount. But that's one uh, the one way we've had great success with keeping those wheel collars on. Not It's not bulletproof, but it does help and uh, we've had some pretty good success with them staying on for quite a while. Uh, using that method. So I'm going to explain once again here while I got this uh, in here is this wheel is going to slide on. We gave extra washers. Some people like to put a washer out here between that and the wheel collar. And then uh, finally the wheel collar will go on here. Okay. So that's kind of the way it's all going to fit together. Now the way I ground this uh, flat spot once again was this will be pointing to the ground, okay? Because this has sides on it, okay? Like a like, kind of like a, a hex head bolt, okay? So I want those where two flat spots are sticking out the bottom of the gear. Let me bring the fuselage back in here, okay? So that when I put this in here, let me do it on this side, all right? So now my flat spot's sticking down and I got the sides so I can stick a wrench in from the top, okay, to hold that while I put the um, uh, nylon insert nut and washer on the back side, okay? So that's the trick on that, uh, to getting that to work. Because the reason why I want that wheel collar pointing down to the ground is because if I want to check them every now and then, and you do want to check them every now and then to make sure they're not getting loose, is... If I, have, if I just turn it upside down in an airplane stand or something, um, I can get a, a little wrench, an Allen head wrench, right down in there and tighten them up. So that's why I want to stick it towards the ground, okay? So when we get it all put together, it's going to look like this, okay? So there you see the end of a stick. That's going to go through, the, uh, through this part right here, okay? And then we're going to stick a washer and a nylon insert nut on the back side, and it's gonna look like this. Okay, and that's the way it fits. Now, these that uh, Extreme Flight uh, Legacy Aviation has supplied, they have a little groove right there, and it makes it really nice because it just it, 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 it just fits it right in there. There's no um, other bolts you will need. Once you tighten this up, it's a set system. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten that all up, and I'll come right back with uh, showing you kind of the finished product there. Hi, once again, picking up with the uh, landing gear here. We're all finished up. Uh, it's all mounted up nice and tight. Again, when you tighten these, um, you don't want to crank down on them real hard. Just make sure they're good and snug uh, because these are uh, an aluminum or soft metal type stuff. I'm not sure that they're a little bit, but they're probably some kind of soft metal, so you can't crank down on them super hard, uh, but just enough to make sure they're good and tight. But I think the gear came out really, really nice. So that pretty much wraps up our gear. Next, we're gonna to move to the tailwheel.